If you've been following along, then you know that I've just submitted my first ever chip design. And this was a design that I put together with a few other people. So there are eight little projects inside the chip. We submitted last year in um, end of November. And just recently, we got a message saying that we needed to do some more work. So this video is going to talk about that. As you probably know, one of the super interesting things about this project is that all the tools are open source. And in fact, to get onto the Google eFabulous Skywater shuttle, which is a, a free service to get your chips made, your design needs to be open source all the way down to the final files we sent to the factory, the GDS2 files. We're using a set of tools called Open Lane, which is an ASIC flow. And the idea is we put the digital design files into the beginning of that flow. And out of the end, we get the GDS2 files. And Open Lane is under a lot of heavy development. And there's been some bugs that have been discovered. And we've unfortunately run into some now. A few weeks ago, I interviewed Tim from eFabless about what happens with our designs between the time when we submit them to eFabless and them sending them off to Skywater for fabrication. And one of the steps in the process was using a commercial tool called Calibre to run a secondary DRC check on all the files. And that discovered a few other things that the DRC within Open Lane hadn't spotted. A lot of projects got flagged with extra DRC issues. And so eFabless organized Zoom calls for us to get together and look at what was going on and what the problems were in our design. And then I'm using a program called K Layout to look at the different layers and see where the problems is. So we've got this DRC marker in the middle of the screen and they're asking me to uh, show just a single layer. The DRC problem is these layers have to be contiguous. We can't have these little crossover sections. You can see the markers on the screen now. And that was specific to my design. That was to do with a fake antenna diode. So if you want to know more about that, you can look up antenna diodes on the Zero to ASIC course website. Essentially what the problem is, is that the, the fake diode that was being used was missing a layer. And that missing layer is causing a problem for the DRC. Let's take a look at what the uh, fixed antenna diode package looks like. This is the new diode. And the problem was that it didn't have this HVTP layer. That layer was missing and has now been added, and that's fixed that problem. The other problem we found was on metal layer 5. This layer should be reserved for routing power, but something else was putting these shapes here. And not only can they cause DRC issues, but they can also cause short circuits. So the two yeah. questions is, why are those bits of metal there, and why didn't we find out earlier? Let's take a look at the process of going from our digital design to the final files. We take our small design, we run it through the tools and we get a block, which we're calling a macro. And then that needs to get put into this bigger context here. And it gets powered on this um, grid here, which is called the PDN, the power delivery network. And we have a few different layers here. We've got um, these lines going on metal five and these lines going on metal four, and they're joined together so that anything you put underneath them can be wired up. Uh, we cut the lines on metal four. You can see they're ending here. And then put the macro in there. And then the metal five lines run across the top. And then at a certain point, they make a via that drops down and connects it to the power rail of the macro. So when we harden the macro, when we take the design files and we turn it into the GDS2 files, we need to make sure that the macro doesn't use Metal 5, otherwise it's going to interfere with the power delivery network. Now, between these two config directives in the configuration for open lane, that's telling the tools to not use layer 5 for doing the routing. But what was occasionally happening is that on some designs, it was happening anyway. So Jeff from eFabless made a new Slack channel and invited all the people on there that had this problem on Metal 5 with some instructions. And what we need to do is to basically add a obstruction block on Metal 5 that prevents the router from doing any routing there and then re-harden our designs and resubmit. So because I had these eight designs, I needed to go back and re-harden them all then re-aggregate them all into the user project wrapper and then re-harden the top level Caravel design and then resubmit that. So I did that yesterday and let Jeff know. So within the next few days, we're hoping that the final files will get rechecked 
with calibre and then sent off to Skywater for production. Now that we've spotted the tools have these problems, we can take steps to fix them. And in fact, that's already done. That's one of the great things about the open source tools is how fast they move and how quickly problems can be fixed. It turns out that Magic, the VLSI tool that is used a lot in the open lane flow, was spotting these errors, but the error reporting didn't make it up into the top level, so we didn't know it was happening. Another way of detecting this problem is to use layout versus schematic, which is a way of checking that the output matches the input. We do use layout versus schematic to check for problems with our own projects, but what wasn't happening was checking that there weren't problems being introduced when we merged all the projects together into the Caravel harness. And that's on the cards for a future improvement for Open Lane. So if this is interesting for you and you want to learn how to do it yourself, then you can sign up for my course at zero to asiccourse.com.